internet in short we can uh, define internet as a tangible network of computers so what does it be tangible it is nothing but the actual network of computers will form a net uh, internet okay so what is the purpose of using internet that is we will uh, go on with sharing the information or exchanging the information with the help of the protocol so in the picture you can clearly see in uh, uh, the software browser and the computer the different service providers and uh, this isp is connected with the routers and the servers so all these constitute the internet okay so what is the protocol so by definition we can uh, say that protocol is a set of rules and standards or procedures to follow in such a way that the communication will be uh, performed in a good manner okay so for that we will be using the protocol okay so internet protocols are the standards uh, designed to specify how the computers interact with each other and they can go for exchanging the messages over the internet okay for exchanging and interaction purpose we will be using the protocol okay so usually the protocol specifies two things one is the message format the other one is how to handle the errors okay uh, to simplify the design and implementation of the protocols the designer will be decided to uh, design some sets of protocols so each protocol will do some responsibility okay so each protocol is having some uh, functionality so instead of one protocol uh, responsible for all forms of communication that's not the case so each and every so for example if you are going with the file transfer protocol it is used to transfer the files from one uh, system to another system if you are going for using the tcp then uh, Uh, the need is that uh, there is a TCP connection is going to establish between the client and the server. So likewise, each and every protocol is doing will be doing some specific functionality. Okay. So as you all know, we have come across all these OSM models. There are seven layers in OSM model: uh, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer. presentation layer and application layer okay okay so each and every layer is uh, doing or it takes uh, responsibility of specific task okay so coming on to the physical layer it is connect to the physical medium which provides the link okay coming on to the data link layer it controls the flow of messages on the particular uh, link Uh, the network layer will uh, used to choose the next path next node in the network and what is the next link to uh, forward the packets okay and uh, transport layer uh, it is it will provide the quality of service okay to the uh, next level required by the user and session layer will control the uh user to use the dialog that is session. session management will be done by the session layer okay and also it will do the synchronization also okay. and presentation layer it will uh, uh present the information in a particular format that uh, format will be understandable by the user and application layer will provide service to the user so these are the functionality of seven layers and we have also compared with this uh, oic model with the tcp ip model also so coming on to the count there is number of layers present in tcp ip model so four layers that is uh, physical layer data link layer network layer and transport layer okay and here it is specified uh, for each and every layer uh, what are the protocols used to here Okay, uh, coming on to the physical layer, I can go by using the uh, connecting devices that is hub and repeater can be used. And at the data link layer, you can use the uh, switch and uh, bridges as the connecting devices. And at the network layer, routers used. Transport layer, 
TCP, UDP and SPX. So what is the uh, uh, expansion for XPA is this sequence to packet exchange. So this is the protocol for handling the packet sequencing in the network. So for that purpose, we will be using the SPX protocol. Sequence packet exchange. Okay. So TCP IP protocols are uh, considered to be the standard uh, through which around which the internet has been developed. Okay. We call OSI model as a generic protocol independent standard. Okay. So here you can clearly see how the OSI model is uh, compared with the TCP IP model. So in the TCP IP model, we are having only four layers. In compared to the seven layers of OSI model, that is data link, network, transport, and the application layer. And what are the protocols used in application layer? Uh, HTTP, SMTP, POP3, FTP. So all these protocols are used as the application layer. So one such protocol we are uh, dealing with the HTTP protocol. Okay. And in the transport layer, we will be seeing the TCP protocol and UDP. Network layer, IP protocol and ICMP, that is Internet Control Message Protocol. Okay, fine. Data link layer, ARC and RARC. Okay. So, next comes, so what is the uh, need or why we are using HTTP protocol? So, HTTP protocol provides a standard or it's a protocol means it's a, uh, a set of rules okay, for the uh, web browser, standard for a web browser and the servers to communicate. So with this uh, HTTP protocol, the web browser and the web server will be communication, will be communicated properly with this uh, protocol. Okay? And uh, it is uh, acting as the foundation of data communication for the uh, World Wide Web. Okay. And this is the application layer network protocol built on the top of the uh, transport control protocol, TCP protocol. Okay. So HTTP client and HTTP server will be there. So two missions will be there. One is HTTP client, the other one is uh, HTTP server. So these two missions or two programs will be communicating via the HTTP request message and response message. Okay. And HTTP is, uh, sorry, hypertext is a structured text so that uses the logical link or hyperlink between the nodes. Okay. And it is the protocol to use mainly for the exchange of the text or transfer of the hypertext. We call the HTTP as a stateless protocol. So why? Because of that, the server will not have any history of the client's transaction. Okay. So here you can see, because each command is executed independently, without the knowledge of the commands that came before it. So whatever the command coming from the client will not be noted down by the server. Uh, in case uh, the uh, the client can send the same request to the server also, but it will not be notified by the server. So uh, we call HTTP protocol as a stateless protocol. So there is no history or no history is maintained in the with the use of this uh, HTTP protocol. Okay. So protocol is a standard procedure for defining the communication and regulating the communication. So, uh, communication should go in a proper way. For that, we are uh, defining the uh, standard protocol. Okay. So, example of TCP, UDP, HTTP. Okay. So this is all we have seen already. Okay. So what are the terminologies related with this? Uh, the session we are going to see is IP address. So IP address is nothing but the uh, 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 address meant for any host mission or any devices. Okay. The numerical label assigned to your device. 
So with that uh, IP address, uh, any machine can participate or can be connected with the network. TCP is one of the protocol of uh, internet protocol shoot and it provides the reliable transmission. So reliable in the sense there won't be any data loss in between the uh, in the communication or in the transmission. Okay, that uh, uh, we can ensure the no data loss will be there. So we call TCP as a uh, reliable protocol. So it provides label ordered error checked delivery of a stream of objects between the programs running on computers connected to an intranet or internet. Okay. And uh, port number. So port number is a single number and uh, it is associated with the IP address. So where we will use this port number means it will, uh, uh, while specifying the destination address for the Okay, and what is going to be socket? Socket is a combination of uh, IP address and the port number. Okay. okay, for example, if you enter any URL, uniform resource locator. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, URL can be a uh, yahoo.com or google.com or uh, facebook.com likewise okay so if you enter a url in your browser this actually sends the send as an uh, http command to the web server so uh, so imagine your web web browser is your client so client is the web browser that is your http client so it is sending the request to the uh, web server so assume web server is the HTTP server. Okay. So what does this uh, server will do means it will uh, uh, reply the reply for the corresponding request received from the client. Okay. And uh, the server will be directed to fetch the corresponding web page and transmit the requested web page to the client. So this is what happening in a while uh, we are browsing any particular URL. Okay. So coming on to the versions of HTTP, there are two main versions uh, uh, of HTTP is existing. So the first version is say 1.0, the second one is 1.1. .1. As we have uh, seen already, uh, HTTP provides a set of rules and standards okay, that govern the information or that govern the communication. Okay, that is uh, being happened via the internet. For example, you are on HTTP uh, www.google.co.in. Okay, so the first part of the address of a site on the internet, it specifies the protocol. HTTP is uh, specifying the protocol used in the application layer. Okay. And this will uh, be signifying the document written in the HTML, that is hypertext markup language. So here uh, in this picture, you can clearly see that web browser is sending the request. The web browser is nothing but the client mission. Okay. Sending the request to the web server. So web server is nothing but the uh, server mission. And based on the request, it will uh, convert or it, the domain name will be converted into the uh, corresponding IP address. That process will be done at the web, web server and it will send the uh, response required web, web page to be displayed on the uh, browser. Okay, so here you can see how to access the resources over the uh, web browser. So usually you will go by typing with the starting with the protocol followed that colon double slash backslash followed by the server followed by the single slash and path. So this server and path is representing the address that is uniform resource location and the first part representing the communication protocol that uh, used between the client and the server. Okay. 
So we call HTTP as the client server protocol by which two machines can communicate using the TCP connection. So TCP will be providing a reliable connection or reliable transmission and uh, connection oriented transfer service will be given by the TCP protocol. Okay. And uh, here you can see uh, browser is a HTTP client because it sends records to the HTTP server that is for web server. Okay. So the client will be sending uh, records to the server. In turn, the server will be sending response back to the client. Okay. So the server is nothing but a program. So what the server will do means it will listen to the whatever the request received from the client. Okay. So the standard and default port for HTTP servers is to for listening the request from the client is the port number used is 80. Port number 80 is used by the HTTP server. Okay. So usually the HTTP will be implemented on the top of the other protocol. Okay. That is the top of the TCP. So we call uh, HTTP as a stateless protocol. The reason is that um, there is no memory between the client con connections. That's the main uh, uh, reason. That is, the thing is that the server never maintains the history of the request received by the client. So there is no memory is uh, maintained. So, whenever the client sends the request, the server will be treating uh, and as it is a new request received by the server. So, it won't suppose if the same request is sent by the client, same client means if this is the case, the server won't identify that the request has been already received by the server. So, it uh, it does not notify that. The server does not notify that. So there won't uh, have, the server uh, does not maintain the memory or the history of the client's uh, interaction. Okay. So we call uh, HTTP protocol as a stateless protocol. Okay. So usually uh, HTTP is uh, protocol is having six attributes. Uh, one is the uh, thing, it's, uh, it's called as a client server model and uh, it's uh, very simple to implement and it's also very flexible and it's content typing and we call HTTP as a connectionless protocol, stateless protocol and meta, it contains meta information. Okay. So we'll see how the HTTP works. Okay. So HTTP will be implemented by uh, two programs. One is the client program and the other one is the server program. Executing on two different end systems. Okay. So now uh, assume that the two systems are going to communicate with or talk with each other. With the help of exchanging the HTTP request message and HTTP response message. So usually the first... So here you can see uh, client is here. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So client is uh, accessing the browser and the uh, request will be sent as a HTTP request to it. It will reach the web server. Okay. And it sends uh, the corresponding the Google Doc form. Its corresponding IP address is fetched from the web server and it sends response. The uh, IP address of the google.com will be sent via the HTTP response back to the client. Okay. The web server will be responding to the client. If it is not so, it will communicate with the DNS. So what is DNS here? Domain name server. Okay, uh, here in, in the center you can see DNS and what are the connections with the internet, you can see the switches, 
routers. These are all the connecting devices connected with the DNS. That is domain name server. DNS is the application layer protocol. So what is the function of DNS is that it is uh, actually a distributed database which is implemented in a uh, hierarchy of name servers. So what does this DNS uh, server will do means it will uh, respond to the uh, respond with the answers to the queries against the database. Okay. Actually, DNS is a hierarchical decentralized naming system for computers, services, other resources connected to the internet or private network. Okay. And uh, it translates the main functionality of DNS is that. Uh, it associates with the domain name assigned to each of the participating entities and it translates the domain name into your IP address that is needed for locating and identifying any computer devices or computer services with the network protocol. So that was, this was the function of the DNS. So what does this DNS will do means it will translate the domain name into the IP address. That's the main thing done by the DNS. Okay. And uh, this IP address will be useful for locating and identifying any computer devices. Okay. So here uh, HTTP server is implemented by the Apache HTTP server, uh, Microsoft IIS, Vista, uh, Zoom, etc. Okay. And each uh, client server transactions uh, Either it may be a client request or it may be a response message. So each uh, message will be consisting of three main parts. One is the response or request line. Okay, here you can see this uh, request message. So the first uh, thing is that first part is the re response or request line. The second part is header information. And the third part is body of the message. So whatever it may be a request, it uh, consists of three parts or it may be a response message, it also consists of the same three parts. Okay. So we will see how does the HTTP work. Suppose that the client uh, is typing uh, over the web browser as uh, yahoo.com. He, uh, the user wants to visit the yahoo.com uh, uh, website name. So then uh, you can clearly see the IP address of the client mission and the port number used. Okay. And it is sent to the, the request will be sent to the web server. And now we need the IP address of the yahoo.com. Okay. So for that, the server will be connected to the DNS server. So what does this DNS server will do? 